Hello everybody, this is Blex here. I'm bringing you a guide this time on some basic pandas functions. So we went through a few videos ago about installing, we talked about some of the development environments, we talked about importing data, we troubleshooted some issues that I had with pip. Now let's get into actually working with the data set and doing some of the basic things with pandas to kind of explore your data. I will be covering variables and other things in the future, but I feel like it's best to use some type, some type of real life example. and. Kaggle provides an exceptional opportunity for that. So we're going to be using the PUBG Finish Placement Prediction Challenge. And in this, we're going to be using the training and test data from this challenge. Now, I highly recommend spending some time on this site and competing in some of the competitions. I will be making some guides on competing as we progress through our series of videos. Um, but for now, let's just use this as a baseline and collect, or just use this as a data set to, to build our skills from and to learn more. Uh, real quick, the data tab will always have the access to the data. So we have a training data set, test data set, sample data set, as well as the data fields. What I'm going to call it for this video is the kills field. So number of enemy players kills, killed, sorry. Um, and lastly, the win place percentage, which is the target of prediction for this exact competition. But for our purposes, um, it's going to be a focal point of the discussion we have. But just know that it's the target variable, so we want to try to best predict how to identify this value. And I'm using kills in my examples. So let's get into this. So let's download the data, and I've already pre-done that and stored that in a folder here. So I have it on my D drive, code, Python, Kaggle, PUBG, and we have the different files here. I've gone ahead and pre-created a IPython notebook, or sorry, Jupyter notebook for the purposes of this. But let me go ahead and just show you how I'd access this, because naturally Python boots to the D C drive. So I'd go D, semicolon, and then I'd do CD, and then just copy and paste that into there. There's a guide on this as well if you have any questions. So we'd pop open a Jupyter Notebook. It would have access to the CSVs that we just downloaded, as well as the pre-existing file that I've already created. Now, today we're going to be talking about pandas. So we want to go ahead and import pandas in. It's just common practice to use the name nomenclature PD. I always import NumPy as well, which is a common term MP for that as well. And then also date time is something I pretty much always import as well, just because it, it comes in handy. We're not going to be using it in this video, but I want to get you guys familiar with both date time and matplotlib as we'll be covering those functions in the future. So you can go ahead and import those. All of those are accessible through the Anaconda download that we previously went and installed. So let's get started here. So we know we have a training data set that we need to work with. It's about half a gig, so it's pretty big. Um, some of you guys working on laptops might have issues with that, but give it a go. So we're going to go ahead and read that in. And I've created a guide on this already, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the function that we previously talked about. So we're going to do pd, read csv, and then we're going to call in the name of the csv. So that's the train.csv and we're going to store that in the df variable. From here, one of the most basic functions that I commonly use with pandas is the head function. And what that does is show you the first five rows of data. What this is good for is just understanding what's inside the data. What are you looking at? Do we have text? Do we have numbers? What's inside this data? So you type in df head and you can see all the different values here, what the actual data points look like for all the different columns. And uh, it's just the first five rows so you don't you don't create this massive wall of data if you just did df, um, which is just you know not functional. So let's go back to df head, clean that up. We got a quick idea. Hey, we have kills here. We have a win percentage at the end. We have a few other data points that look interesting, but just good for exploring. One thing you will notice is I do have a line. Well, not anymore. Let me quickly restart this. I have a line in my data set that is uh, only there because we don't have enough rows visible. So there's this function that you can call called PD, or we're just calling pandas, sorry. And then we're calling the function set option and we're changing display and we're increasing the max column visible to 200. Now you can set this to whatever you want. I feel like 200 is just a safe number where most data sets that you work with are below 200, at least for, for Kaggle and, and other common uses. So you're good there. And what that allows you to do is when you call df head, um, you'll see it in a second, but there is going to be right here, 
some dot 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 lines so you can't see every column which is kind of frustrating you want to be able to see everything so in order to get rid of that you call this display function to increase the amount of rows visible so now I can see every row with no dot dot in the middle now moving on describe is the next function that I use most often so we just can call our data set df dot describe and what this does is it gives you counts means standard deviations minimums maximums and numbers in between for the data set for each individual column I should say now you'll notice here it naturally comes out in scientific form so that looks pretty weird this is pretty useful it's all a bunch of scientific notation that's not easy for us to comprehend quickly and, and that's the whole reason for using describe is you want to be able to quickly identify some trends maybe in the data now let's just take a quick look let's call the df kills column so our data frame df and we're calling specifically the subset of of kills that column kills and we're going to be using the unique function and that just gives you every unique value in that column now the purpose for that is I want to validate that there's no actual reason for the kills showing up as it does here so like make sure there's no weird decimals or weird things going on and as you can see we have pure integers based on the data type here and they range from from 0 to 60 so there's no reason for scientific notation to be showing up as, as it does so method one we can clean this up by using this lambda function and I will touch on this in a future video but I want to expose you guys to this now so you guys have a little bit of a, a taste before we move into that so we have df we take the subset of kills that kills column we describe it so we're just doing the same thing we do up here but we're applying this lambda function and what this does is for each value x it formats it as we dictate so we're formatting x as dot two which is two decimal places we can bump this to four if you want and you can see four decimal places this is a lot more readable so if this is the kills column we can now see total number there as well as the mean standard deviation min and max for these columns now the easier way to do this is by using another PD set options function and this is going to be displayed at float format so we're going to change float format to dot four so we have four decimal places so let's go ahead and do that and then we have our DF describe here which is not in that format um, we can go ahead and run that DF describe and as you can see we now have each column in this more readable notation with four decimal places you know that's a little much let's pull it back to two like it was and that allows us to more easily read and access the data so we can quickly take a look and see what's going on here for example with assist we can see people typically average 0.2 max of 20 and it's just a nice way to, to easily be able to access this and, and look at data ranges and try to quickly pick up on trends that you're seeing in the data so that we can further analyze as we progress through our analysis. Next is DF types. So this will show you for each individual column in the data frame what the data type is. So in our example we have int64s, we have floats, nothing else, which is great. So we don't have any objects, we don't have any um, strings as they're commonly referred to as, nothing like that, nothing categorical we need to worry about just yet just pure integers just pure floats which is great so integers whole numbers floats decimal point numbers um, or, or larger numbers I should say depending on the, the size of the values and then from here so this is good for just quickly seeing okay do I need to clean anything up do I need to do any string analysis or anything like that with my data frame we don't have that in our case now next I want to talk about breaking single columns to be able to better view um, the data so let's say we want to take a look at the different matches so we know there's a match ID column and match ID we assume to be just a grouping of one singular match so let's go ahead and subset our data frame by this function here so we're calling our data frame first and then we're subsetting it by the match ID column and we want that to equal match ID 1 so what we're doing is just calling all the data where match ID equals 1 now the reason for this is I want to be able to just see if match ID is consistent like if we see 120 players in match ID 1 that would be an issue uh, that would be something where I'd say like okay we know there's only 100 players in this matches what's going on here questions get asked but we run this to see if it looks right is there a true winner in the match let's validate and see how the data works out let's see how all these things are interacting in a given match scenario so that we can start extrapolating up to the larger data set so I'm also adding this sort values function here so sort values is another pandas function to be able to sort specific columns 
In this particular scenario, I'm sorting by win place percentage. So I want to sort that on a ascending equals zero, which um, in terms of this means descending. So we start at win placement percentage one, which means they won the match. They, they're the first team to complete this match, a team of four here, and we descend down to zero. So just want to be able to view this data and see if I can pick up on any trends by looking on a singular match basis. Now we can go ahead and scroll to the bottom left hand corner and see we have 93 rows and 25 columns. So 90, no sorry, 93 rows, I might have just said 95. Uh, 93 rows, which shows us we don't have a complete data set. We have uh, a few players who either didn't join the map or um, we didn't pick up on data. So that's, I think it's most likely someone didn't join the map, but there's a possibility that we're missing data. Also, looking here, we can say, okay, win percentage one, this first team, kills instinctively feels like a strong predictor of who's gonna win the match. So if you look at kills, we see this first team, 4191, eyeballing that. That is a lot more kills than, that's, you know, what, 15 kills? 15 kills is a lot more than any other grouping of numbers I can see listed here. So maybe that's a strong indicator. It's just a quick insight you picked up by selecting and subsetting our data frame by one match only. Now, I do want to touch on one last pandas function, and that is the crosstab function. Crosstab works best, in my opinion, with binary data. So, um, for example, if you had a male and female and you wanted to look at the uh, prices paid for a ticket or something like that, or male and female, like salaries or something like that, it's a lot easier when you have a binary value because it doesn't look as messy. Now, what crosstab does is it creates this matrix of values. So at kill level zero, so if you have zero kills, how many people fall into the zero in percentage bucket? How many people fall into the rest of these buckets here all the way up to 100%? So you can see we can gain a quick trend based on how these numbers fall in this matrix that a lot of people actually have won the match with zero kills. It definitely progresses upwards as you get into kill level one and two, and um, the volume spikes up, I should say, uh, but we can see a lot of people have lost the match with zero kills as well. But this is a good way, a quick way to kind of see any insight and visualize data in a matrix format. As you can see, level six, the person with 60 kills, this seems like a massive outlier, did in fact win the game. Now. The very last thing I want to do is tease you guys on plotting. So let's say we wanted to visualize what win percentage look like by kill level. So let's say we take our DF win percentage and we're going to be using the matplotlib library that we called in up top for, for your reference. And uh, I'll get more into this at a later date, but I just want to quickly show you how we can um, access and visualize data in Python as a teaser. So we can take our win percentages, we can count uh, set that as our x-axis and then we can set our kill levels to zero and see the frequency of Data points that fall into that. So if you have zero kills, we're forcing kills to be zero in this in this visualization You're most likely going to lose the match here in this first bucket Now, let's say we bump this up to ten or actually one's already done right here So one if you have one kill uh, You're actually more likely to finish top 20% now let's bump this first one up to 10, and you can see if you have 10 kills, you're in the top is it 90% chance of winning the match, which is fantastic insight for us to gather. So the more kills beyond a, a threshold, maybe, let's say it's four, is going to tell you that you're more likely to win the match. Um, lastly, there's some group by functions. I'm gonna make a stand standalone video for that, but what, does, what that does is it groups every data point. So for this example, we're grouping, um, we're grouping win percentage and we're taking the average kills. So kills, oops, kills, and we're finding the mean of that. So we're saying group everything together by win percentage, and then let's take the average kills for that grouping. So you can see how as the win percentage increases in the x-axis, our average value of kills increases on the y-axis. And this is the data, um, the pure data for that tab. Quick little teaser on that last bit. Thank you guys for hanging along. I'm gonna have more videos to come. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys and um, stick with me.